Hello and welcome to this further maths video on vector geometry and equations of lines. So we start off just revising a couple of points um, that you would have covered in your single maths course uh, about vectors and distances. So find the distance between this pair of points. So you could have done this at GCSE. You're trying to find the distance AB. You're going to say, what's the vector that takes me from A to B? So the vector that takes me from A to B is going to be uh, minus 2, so from 1 down to minus 1, uh, 6. And we want the modulus of that. So that's going to be minus 2 squared plus 6 squared square rooted. So that's root 40. Part B, we're going into three dimensions. So what we need to do here is make sure that we've clearly got the vector from A to B. Now, if it's a numerical example like this, you can just say to yourself, well, how would I get from A to B? I would move... Um, that vector is going to be from to get from A to B, I'd go one minus one to minus two is minus one, naught to five is five. If you want to think of it in terms of uh, the actual vectors themselves, you might think, well, here is uh, O to A, and here is O to B. And how do I get from A to B? So to get from A to B, I'm going to go from A to O plus O to B. So I'm going to go back along AO. So that's going to be minus the vector that is A. So minus 3 minus 1 naught plus O to B, which is 4 minus 2, 5. And that gives you this vector that we got here. The reason I write it out like this is that if you have an algebraic example, you might need to think of doing it that way. We haven't finished the question yet. We need to find the distance, so we need the modulus, that's what that symbol means, of AB, and that's going to be 1 squared, it's minus 1 squared, plus 5 squared, square rooted, which is the square root of 27. So that's just a recap of finding different points. Um, something to remember up here that two vectors are parallel if one is a multiple of the other. Now, when we're working in Cartesian equations, you're all very familiar that the equation of a straight line is y equals mx plus c. But when we move into three dimensions or more than three dimensions, we can use vectors. And the way vectors used uh, is given here. We've got R, and these are written in bold, is a vector A plus lambda times a vector B. So what that's saying is here's the origin. Here's my vector A, and I want the line maybe to look like this. So here's my line. So in order to move along this line, I need to first of all get onto it with a vector A, and then I need to move up and down it, multiples of this vector B. So this is the vector B. So this represents getting onto the line, and this represents moving up and down the line. So we need to have this, which is called, this bit here is called the direction vector of the line. And this is a point on the line. So, first example, find the vector equation through that point parallel to that vector. So that's giving you the direction vector of the line. That tells you how you move up and down the line. So what we need to write for this is R is equal to the point on the line, 1, 1, minus 2, plus lambda, times the direction vector, minus 1, 1, naught. It's really important that you have the R equals. Just like in um, Cartesian equations, if I said, what's the equation of this line? You would say y equals 2x plus 7. You wouldn't just say 2x plus 7. So you must have the y equals, and you wouldn't get the marks in an exam if you didn't have that R equals there. You can also group it into one bracket, which it's useful to do sometimes, 
uh, like this, one minus lambda, one plus lambda uh, minus two. So sometimes it's useful to have it written as one bracket. Next example, it says find the vector equation of the line which passes through these two points. So let's think what's going on here. Here's my origin, here's the point A, and here's the point B. So we're going to need to get onto the line, which we could either do at A or at B, and we need to move up and down multiples of this direction vector AB. So the first thing we need to do is find the direction vector AB. And again, I'm just going to do it from the points written here. So how do I get from A to B? From 1 to minus 2 is minus 3. From 3 to 1 is minus 2. And from minus 1 up to 5 is 6. So that's my direction vector. That's the vector that's going to take me from A to B. So I've got two options for the line. I could either say that R is equal to, so I can get onto the line at A, 1, 3, minus 1, plus lambda times minus 3, minus 2, 6. Or I could get onto the line at B. So if I get onto the line at B, that's going to be minus 2, 1, 5. Now I need to use a different parameter this time, so I'm going to use mu times the direction vector, which is minus 3, minus 2, 6. So you ought to use a different parameter if you're getting on at a different point. So both of these are the same line. Uh, it's important you realise that the same line can have equations that look slightly different. Uh, the direction vectors will always have to be parallel to each other for the same line, but they might not actually be the same uh, again. So you could have, if I wanted to do a third version of this line, I could get on at A, but move up and down parameter T this time, and I could just use double that. And that would also be an equation of that line. So just watch out that different lines uh, different equations can be the same line. Now we need to be able to link between Cartesian form and our vector form of lines. So if you think about our vector equation, it's going to be A1, A2, A3, if that's my point on the line, plus lambda times b1 plus lambda times b2 plus lambda times b3 that's my direction vector and that's got to be equal to x y z where x y and z are the cartesian equations so if we put these equal you can see that x is equal to a1 plus lambda times b1 y is equal to a2 plus lambda times b2 and z is equal to a3 plus lambda times b3 but our equation of a line in Cartesian form cannot have this lambda in. So we need to rearrange each of these little equations and make lambda the subject. And then we can put all of these things equal to each other. And this is the Cartesian equation of the line. So that looks quite different to the way you will have seen a line in two dimensions. It's really important to remember and kind of make things a lot quicker for you. If you remember that the direction vector is on the bottom, the direction vector is the, de on the, is the denomination of the fraction, uh, the denominator of the fraction. So the, that's on the bottom and then the point is on the top but you must have it as x minus and y minus. So you need to be prepared to um, work that through. So let's have a look. It says give the Cartesian equation of this line. So we should just be able to write this down. It's going to be x minus the point on the top. So y minus the point, z minus the point and each of those is going to be over the direction vector two three four and we would rewrite that as x plus three over two 
equals y minus 1 over 3 equals z plus 4 over 4. And that is the Cartesian equation of the line. If you had a negative on the bottom here, um, then you might bring it up and that might sort of slightly change the way it looked. So let's look at this next, ex next example. So what are we going to have here? Well, we're going to have um, x minus the point on the top divided by naught. Now that is, oh, that's not going to go well, so we're going to have to deal with that in a minute. y minus 2 over minus 1 equals z minus 1 over 2. So what do we have to do here? Um, we've got that um, so this this can't play a part in it but we're going to need to think about that in a minute so we're just going to put a line through that because we don't like dividing by naught so let's just sort out what we've got here we've got because of the negative on the bottom i would probably write this as two minus y so i'd get that negative on the top equals um z minus one over two but we need to stipulate what's going on here. Now, if you just look back to the vector equation of the line, you should be able to see that whatever value t takes, r is going to be minus 3. So x is going to be, the x coordinate is always going to be minus 3. So you would write the equation of the line like that. So x is always going to be minus 3. And then we've got this equation of the line going on like that. If you try and think of what that would actually look like, x, y, and z. I might struggle to draw this for you. Um, so x is going to be minus 3. So x is always minus 3 for this line. And then y and z vary. So it's going to be a line in this plane through the point x equals minus 3. Don't worry if you can't picture that because that's quite difficult. So we've got these two forms of a line. We've got r equals a plus lambda b, vector form. And we've got the Cartesian form, which looks like this. The top number is the point and the bottom number is the direction vector.